Hi there. I was just playing a game on my mobile phone and using the backtracking algorithm. Wait, what did I just say? Backtracking. Can you tell me something more about it? Sure. You too must have played some games like Mario, Pokemon or any other mission based games and tried to complete all the levels, right? And there is a very high chance that just to complete all the levels and complete all those side missions, you too have applied the backtracking algorithm. Let's see what all of this is actually about. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, a place where we explore the life of technology and make programming fun and easy to learn. Today, I want to talk about the backtracking algorithm. What all places is it used? Why is it even needed? How do you go about applying this algorithm? And what do you actually do? Note that we will not be writing any code in this video. That will come later on. First of all, I just want to make sure that you are understanding the concept very clearly. To put things in a nutshell, backtracking is also an algorithmic paradigm that refines the brute force approach and takes help of the recursion based algorithmic paradigm. So, to get a quick recap of brute force and recursion, find the links in the description below to my previous videos. I highly recommend you to take a look at them because if those concepts are clear to you, you will understand backtracking really quickly. So if you are ready, let's get started. I always believe that when you are trying to learn a new concept, it becomes very easy if you can relate it to some real life example. So going back to our example of video game, I have this kind of a scenario in front of me, right? And I am playing with my character Mario. You all must be familiar about Mario, right? So while you're playing the game, this is a kind of situation where you come across. You have Mario and then you have so many paths in front of you. And if you realize that only one of the path will lead you to Princess Peach, where you want to go, correct? All the other paths will lead you to King Koopa, who is destined to kill you, right? So what do you do? How do you find this path? So this is the problem that you have at hand. And now you have to start thinking, what can you do about it? So one of the ways that you can start to approach this problem is by selecting any random path that comes to your mind. So what you can do is you can take your character Mario and you take him one step up. You now have to take a decision between either going to the right or going to the left, correct? Randomly, you decide, okay, I will go left and then you move ahead. Once again, you have two paths. And this time you say, you go right. If you go right, you encounter King Koopa. Oh my God. So this was not the correct path, right? So what you can do is, you can try to come up with an alternative path. Once again, you can do this randomly. You will take Mario and okay, Last time you went left. Okay, so this time you can go right. I go right this time. Then I move ahead again. And what do I do again? Let's say I go right again. And I'm again having two places to go, left or right. This time, let's say I go left. Okay. And voila, I met my princess. So the game ends, correct? But it could also have been possible that when you were taking your character Mario at certain places. You could have gone right and then right again and then right again and again encountered King Koopa. So you go back again. And what if you went left this time? You might have again met King Koopa. So this is a kind of a random approach. And sure, if you keep on taking random chances at every time, what will happen is eventually you will find a path where you will meet your princess correct? But there is no certain way where you can determine, okay, this is the method I am going to take or this is the way that I'm going to take to reach my princess. So what you were doing up till now, you were trying to approach this problem in a brute force way. That is, you are trying every possible combination just to get at your princess, just to arrive at your answer, right? So this approach is not efficient. The problem you are facing is that whenever you start a path, you do not know whether you have to go left or you have to go right. And the next time, whenever you are encountering the same position, 
you do not know if you have already went towards the left or not correct so how do you solve this problem if you play video games a lot one thing that could come to your mind is you can save your game at several instances right so you can try to form a strategy in your mind what you can do is whenever mario bounces at any point where you are having two choices what you can do is you can save your game at that point right and then what you can decide is at every intersection i will take the left path first so what i'm going to do is after saving my game i go to the left direction right now my mario is at this po position correct once again what you see is you have a intersection and how do you decide where to go once again you will save your game over here and you will go to the left direction right now mario moves ahead in this path and reaches king koopa so you realize hey this is not a correct path so instead of going back all the way to the starting and then trying out new positions what you're going to do is you will take mario and move it to the last saved position that you have right and this time what you can do is you can go to the right direction if you go in the right you will again see that hey i found king koopa so you have eliminated both of these paths correct and this is not the right way to go so what you are going to do next is you will go back to your last save point and this is this point right you have now covered entire path in the left you know that nothing exists over there correct similarly what you can do is now you can start traversing in the right direction so mario will start moving to the right and once again he sees an intersection so what you are going to do you will once again save your game at this flag and then first go to the left direction because you have to follow a certain pattern that is how you can keep a track of all the states or all the positions you have been in so now mario goes to the left and he encounters king koopa again so now you know this is also not the correct path and once again you can bring back mario to your last save point so now what do you do you know you have covered the left path but there is also a right path so you go in the right direction and once again mario is at an intersection what do you do now you will go to the left path and save this point correct now when you move to the left you will hop on this path and ultimately you found your princess right and voila your level is over so you beat the game correct so what were you doing at every point at each of these points you were trying to look at the states of all the positions you have been in correct and this is the way the back tracking algorithms work what were you actually doing over here when mario was at this point right he saw that okay there is king koopa so what do you do you back track to the last state and then from this state you will try to discover new possibilities if this entire state does not get to your solution you will back track again and go back to the last state that you found this of the last state right and now you can start proceeding in the other direction so this is how back tracking works you go ahead and explore a state if that will not give you the solution you come back that is you will backtrack right that is why the name backtracking algorithmic paradigm so at every moment you try to go out and explore a space and if that does not work out you go back to your original state or you backtrack so this is how the backtracking algorithm works pretty simple right and based upon this approach you can start to solve some of the programming problems one of the very popular programming problems that is based on backtracking would be finding all the subsets of a given array what is a subset a subset is any smaller set that can be formed using any of these elements from this original set so for this example all of these can be your subsets sure there will be other subsets as well and there would be so many right so 
how does backtracking work in that context? To take up a simple example, let us just take an array that has just two elements. So now I ask you, okay, tell me all the possible subsets of this array. How you can go about doing this using the backtracking approach? So first of all, what I'm going to do is I will just make an empty set, right? Because an empty set is also a subset, right? Now, what can you do? Remember Mario, where at each state you had two choices, right? So what you can do is you can look at the elements of this array. And now you can start with the first element and decide, do you want to take this element or no? So this is similar as the left and right choice, correct? So either you take the element one or you do not take the element. If I'm taking the element, my subset becomes like one. And if I do not take the element, my subset still remains empty, right? So now I have completed my operation with the element one. Going forward, I have my next element two. Once again, I have a choice. Do I want to take the element two or do I not want to take the element two? So what I'm going to do is at each of these states, I will just try, okay, I am taking the element two and I do not take the element two. And for the other state also, I take the element two and I do not take the element two. So these will give me new sets. So when I take the element two, I get my subset as one comma two. If I do not take two, I just get my original subset. Now in the next state, if I take the element two, then my set becomes two. And if I do not take the set remains empty. So now you see all of my elements have exhausted, right? And if I look closely, these are all the subsets that are possible, right? You cannot form any other subset that is different from these. Certainly you cannot duplicate the elements, right? Talking about some technical terms, this is known as the state space tree. That means it is defining every state your set could be in. So this is a single state, this is a state, this is a state, and this is a state. You have to find out all the unique states and this would be your answer. So this state space diagram represents all the states that are possible. This state space diagram depends upon the type of problem you are solving. A very complex problem could have a very huge state space diagram. That means a lot of possible cases. Think about when you're playing a game of chess. If you're trying to solve chess using backtracking approach, what will happen? Suppose you have a rook. That rook can move in any of the directions, right? And for each of the direction, you will have a different state space tree. So chess is a very complex problem that can be solved using the backtracking approach. But that will come later on. Right now, I just want you to get a feel of the backtracking approach. How does it look? Basically, you just go at a state and then backtrack to find other states, right? And this is all how a backtracking approach looks like. We will look at the code for this problem in one of my later videos. I hope I was able to simplify the backtracking algorithmic paradigm for you. As per my final thoughts, take a moment to think which are the specific kind of problems which can be approached or solved using this backtracking algorithmic paradigm. For example, I will give you a hint. Think about puzzles. Think about some problems where you are given a maze and you have a start point and an end point. Then you have to navigate your path, come back to the previous path and then find a new path, right? Similar is the case of Sudoku. If you're solving a Sudoku, then if one of the choices do not work, you will try to change the number and then come back again with new choices, right? So these are all examples of backtracking. Which other problems did you face where you were able to apply backtracking? Tell me other examples that you found out. What problems did you face? I want to know everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is also available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. You can find the link in the description below. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. 
This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what you want to learn next. I am coming up with more problems on backtracking algorithm paradigms. So, stay tuned.